Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Think on These Things. Well, it's all about controlling your thought life so that your thought life doesn't control you. Well, today we're going to talk for a few minutes about thinking on things that are pure. But before we do, I'm going to ask that if uh, this content is interesting or at least gets you thinking, then give me a thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to this channel to receive more short videos like this one, and share it with others. All right, now let's get into it. Yeah, one time, here we go, here the facts. It happens when you least expect it. Sometimes it's even in your dreams. All right, you're going about your business, going about your day, and a disturbing thought suddenly flashes into your mind. Maybe it's from some TV show you watched or series that you're binging or a movie. It can come from a book you read or a conversation that you've had. Usually, the thought is something violent, sexual, tainted in some way. It's impure. But it's true that you have little control over the random images and ideas that flash through your mind on a daily basis, moment to moment. So how do you take control of those dirty, unsettling thoughts? How can you focus on that which is pure? Well, it's a good question. I mean, so much of your life, and especially your entertainment, the entertainment part of your life, is visual content. I mean, from the news to comedy, audio books, videos, it seems like there is an unlimited, endless supply of information that floods your mind every moment of every day. So how is it even possible to think or meditate, as I like to say, on those things that are pure? So this word pure, it's defined as something that's unmixed with any other matter, free from dust, dirt, or taint. In other words, it means that there's nothing added to it. So a pure thought about sex would be a thought without lust and perversion. It would be with your spouse. <laughs> a pure thought about, let's say, a frustrating situation. That would be a thought that would be free of anger and violence and malice. So if that thought would view the situation from a pure stance of truly wanting what's best for all parties involved and understanding that life is intricate. People are delicate, but how can you achieve pure thinking when we're so consumed by our flesh nature? You know, pure, this word pure, it comes from our Greek word hognos, which means innocent or without defect. And if you're going to think on pure things, then those things have to come from a pure source, right? Any thought not coming from a pure source is going to be tainted and damaged and full of defects. This means that you have to be careful about what you allow in your mind. Remember, there's so much random stuff. It just comes in there anyway. I mean, just based on your environment. But control the things that you can. So when you know something is impure, don't dwell on it. All right. One of the things you can do is replace it with a different thought. Well, how do you do that? And how do you know what's an impure thought? Well, let me give you six common things real quick that can contaminate your self-image and your thought life, okay? First of all, envy. People who allow thoughts of envy to rattle around in their mind tend to feel hostile and resentful and angry and irritable. They're also less likely to be grateful about the positive things in their lives. And you know what? Envy is also related to depression, anxiety, being prejudiced, and really just overall unhappiness. Envy is not a thought that you want to keep. What about anger? Well, I don't have to tell you that anger is an unhealthy thought. You know that, right? Especially when you allow it to control you. Because if you dwell on it, 
sooner or later, it will guide your actions. You know that. It's happened. And that may be regrettable because anger is in control of you and not you in control of your anger. Okay? How about strife? That's an interesting word. Strife is like a bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. So basically, it boils down to arguing over something that isn't worth arguing about. Okay, you ever been in an argument like that? You find yourself in a situation like that. Once it's over, don't let it stay with you. Let it go. You know, that spirit of Elsa, I know. Strife is not worth it. And then there's plain old worry. You know what? There was a Harvard study that showed that constant worry can lead to what's called a generalized anxiety disorder or GAD. <laughs> I know there's a name for everything. I, I get it. Trust me. It's, you know, but worry really can not only lead to an anxiety disorder, but it can lead to actual physical problems in your body as well. You know, some of the itises. <laughs> People get, you know, arthritis, bronchitis, say that three times fast. You know, all of that can come from constant worry. Think about it. The suffix itis literally means inflamed, and that's all it means. Your worry can cause inflammation in your body. There's something to the saying, you're going to worry yourself to death. <laughs> and then negative words and negative thoughts, those, those other two things. Right, just negative thoughts, period. Negative words. None of those things are healthy for you. And again, it's not that you can absolve yourself from ever experiencing any of those things, right? I mean, we're living life, okay? But it's up to you what you do with them. Because in this case, it's not the thought that counts, it's the action it produces. All right, that's it for now. So we'll see you next time. And remember, think good thoughts.